Hey, 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 Scrappy people. It's Tracy Reed here today with a tutorial for you. Since I released my first batch of memory planners last or two weeks ago now, I've just released another batch today. I've gotten some questions about how to use them with your regular physical supplies. So today I'm going to be showing you the best practice for how to use my memory planners or really any digital template with your physical scrapbooking supplies. Now the first thing I'm doing here is I am clipping my photos to each one of the photo spots and I'm resizing this Star Wars poster to fit in the photo spot that I created on this template. So um, what you do is you just drag and drop your photos right onto the template and then to clip it to the actual photo spot you hit command option G or you can hold down option which is alt on a PC in between the two the photo layer and the photo mat layer in the layers palette and it will clip the photo to the photo mat. So you can see I'm resizing this one and then I'm going to hit command option or command alt or control alt G as soon as I have it placed and to the size I want it to be. I also went over this in a tutorial um, previously for these memory planners and it's a little bit slower pace that's why I'm going a little faster in this one. So if you're interested in that original memory planning tutorial um, I will link it below so that you can check it out at a little bit of a slower pace because it talks about how to just use the memory planners. So that is a great introductory um, tutorial for this process. I'm going to speed this up a little bit and just add in all of my photos. Now what I want to show you here is that it is okay to modify the template. Make it work for you. A square photo in that spot did not work for me. So I just got rid of the square photo and put down the whole text message instead. Also not working for me was two photos here since I only had one and it was vertical. So I deleted one and made it uh, the second one vertical. I also resized that bottom photo or I guess the top photo to be a little bit smaller than the main photo. Now I've come in and I've already add all, added all of my journaling. All of my templates have editable journaling on them, journaling spots. That way you can have the text paths and stuff that fit exactly inside these circular journaling labels. I'm gonna add um, this last journaling here, or last couple journaling blocks here so that you can see super easy you just double click in there if you don't have the font that I use it is called splendid 66 it is a free font or you can use whatever font you want to use in your journaling blocks so you can see I'm just adding in my my journaling here for this photo and just typing it out and it goes directly into that circular journal block with no problem at all because I've created the text paths themselves um, in the Photoshop file. Now you can edit these files in Photoshop or in uh, PaintShop Pro, Photoshop Elements, even GIMP if you have um, GIMP which is sort of a free version of Photoshop. It works in all of those programs. Um, but they are, again, templates. So you need to have a program that can edit PSD or TIFF files in layers in order to use these most effectively. Now you don't have to have a silhouette. I am going to be using a silhouette in this tutorial, but I will let you know when we get to that point, you know, where you would just print and fussy cut instead of, um, using your silhouette file or your silhouette machine. I'm adding an extra journaling spot here below this big text message. <clears throat> and I'm going to turn it white. So I just double clicked or I just click command clicked the layer thumbnail in the layers palette to get the marching ants around it and then use my paintbrush to turn it white. I'm gonna delete some extra uh, journaling strips here. I don't need them all. I'm also going to need to turn them white, but I don't do that quite yet because I haven't decided quite yet what I'm going to do with them. I'm just copying a word from this journaling block so that when I come over here and create a new journaling block, I can just paste that word and it will automatically copy the um, text style from all of the rest of my journaling blocks to this new text box. And it doesn't always need that, but a lot of times it will 
default to a different text um, or a different size or things like that. So um, I like to make sure that I just have a word copied so that I can paste it and I know that it matches all of the rest of my text. So I am, I, I decided that I de did need two lines of journaling here in this journaling block. I initially was just going to have one, but my uh, OCD did not appreciate having one when there were two in the previous one. So I changed my journaling a little bit to make it work. <laughs> okay, so I've added all of my journaling. And we are actually getting to the place now where we can leave Photoshop. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make cut files or yeah, print files and cut files for all of these layers. So I'm going to merge together the journaling blocks with the journaling itself. And I'm going to make sure that all of my photo layers are also merged, which I had merged them previously. But this is the time to make sure that everything that you want printed as one thing um, is merged. So I'm merging all of my journaling blocks. I'm going to turn off this bottom layer so that I don't accidentally copy it. And then I'm going to take all of these paper layers and I'm going to um, I'm going to not select them. The only things that I want to select are the things that need to be printed. So I'm creating a new file here at 8.5 by 11, which is US standard printing size. If you are out of the US and you have a different standard printing size, that is the size that you would make your paper. So I'm selecting all of my journaling and all of my photos. And I realized here that I don't select my journaling that I just created on the journaling strip. So I'm gonna have to come back and do that in a, in a minute. But first I'm gonna start with this. I initially was going to print all of it on one sheet, but it wasn't all going to fit on one sheet. So what I'm doing here is I'm pulling out all of the journaling circles to print at the bottom here, but I'm going to change this up in a minute. You can see that I turned on the grid because um, I'm going to be using my silhouette and silhouette cannot print and cut all the way to the edge. So I turned on my grid so that I would know how far away from the edge I was so that I could make sure that um, I was giving my silhouette enough room to create um, effective cut files. So this is where I'm going, uh, yeah, no, that's not gonna work. So I'm, I'm playing with all these photos and initially it does work because I actually missed a photo. Um, the point here is to use up the entire paper if I can. So I'm arranging all of my photos um, to take up the entire paper and I get it to work and then I realized that A, I don't have my journaling blocks, my journaling strips, and B, I had missed a photo entirely. So now I'm just going to print all of the photos on one and all of the journaling blocks on another. So I actually have created my, um, some, that you can see those brackets around the outside edges. I actually created a file that would show me exactly where the silhouette cut lines are. It's useful for me as a designer because I, um, I have to make sure that my product works with the silhouette files. So I have that for um, that use, but it also works for this use as well. And you saw there that when I created the black overlay for the silhouette, it was actually my photos were merged and I hadn't realized it. So I had to go back and change it. So what you need to be doing here is I merged all of my photos once I was done laying them out. And I'm going to do the same with these journaling blocks. And then I duplicated the layer and created an entire black color overlay. So you need both layers, a black layer and a um, color like printable layer because the black layer is gonna tell the silhouette where to cut and the color layer, like the printable um, layer is what you're actually gonna use to print out your photos. So here I am going, oh yeah, I forgot this journaling. So I'm changing those to white and going to copy this journaling over to my eight and a half by 11 sheet. And then I'm also going to do that with that bottom journaling strip that I haven't even filled out yet. And I'm gonna print the journaling on just regular paper. So I'm copying and pasting it over here. It doesn't matter where it goes as long as it's not to the very edge because I don't have to worry too much about um, there being enough room since I'm printing such small pieces and not very many of them. So I'm gonna add my journaling over here as well. I'm 
And then I'm going to do the same with this journaling strip. And then once I get these copied over, I'm going to repeat the process to create the black color overlay for the journaling strips so that I can create cut lines for the journaling strips. Now if you do not have a silhouette, you don't have to worry about this part. Just print this straight out and fussy cut and you will be good to go. Um, then, um, but if you do have a silhouette, sorry, if you do have a silhouette, you want to create a black cover over color overlay to um, make sure that you can create some cut lines. So I'm going to save this layer as um, journaling blackout on my desktop so it's easy to find. And it has to be a PNG file for silhouette to recognize it most effectively. I'm going to do just journaling for the one I'm going to print. Then I'm going to repeat the process for the photos. So this will be photos, blackout, and then I accidentally do not turn on that layer before I save it as a um, as a file, so I have to go back and turn that layer on and create a photos layer, but I do do that, so don't worry. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do is create a cut file for the papers that we're gonna cut out. So since we are not using digital papers, we are using physical papers, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a cut file rather than a print and cut file. And I'm gonna change my grid here to one inch grid with four subdivisions, which is exactly like the silhouette mat. And the key here is to follow the grid when you are placing your papers on the silhouette mat. So just imagine that this is a silhouette mat and you don't have to worry about not going to the edge because um, you're not doing a print and cut, you're just doing a cut and silhouettes can go all the way um, mostly to the edge I think. Uh, so these are a two, about two inches wide and a little under three inches tall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to space them out so that I can put basically a three by four piece of paper uh, for each color all the way across. Um, I'm using three by four because A, it's easy to remember, B, it'll fit evenly on the silhouette mat, and C, uh, it'll, it'll give me enough room to make sure that in, if the silhouette is off a little bit, I don't have to worry too much about it messing up. So I'm placing each one of these in a three by four inch rectangle on the grid. So you, if you look, um, you can see the bold red lines are every inch and you can see that they're in their own little three by four quadrant. Now I need to do the same thing with the circles for the journaling mats, but these are smaller. So they're gonna go in their own little two by two quadrant on the journaling mats. So I'm just kind of trying to decide where will be most effective and easiest for me to remember. I'm gonna duplicate it because I'm just gonna change the color so I don't need to copy and paste every single one. But I do need five of them, so I'm creating five little two by two quadrants across the page. Just counting to make sure. So you can see the rectangles have three by four quadrants, the um, circles have two by two quadrants, and that will make it super duper easy for me to line up my papers on my silhouette mat and not have to fuss too much with it when I want to cut them out. So I just changed it all to black because silhouette reads black the best when you're creating cut lines. And I'm gonna save it as a PNG and I don't need to save two copies because we're not printing anything. So now I'm gonna hop over to my Silhouette software and just like any other print and cut, I'm going to copy and paste the Silhouette lines onto the um, photos and the journaling pages. So I need to turn on my registration marks and of course make them as small as possible and with the least inset. And then you just go in and file print with and you make sure you print
print with the registration marks. That's very important. If you forget to turn the registration marks on, then you uh, are gonna have messed up cuts. So you just go and you know, print at whatever quality your, um, your printer prints at, and then you send it to your silhouette. Now, I've done a few tutorials on using the black outlines to get your cut lines, and it is in the tutorial, the previous tutorial that I've linked below. So if you don't know how to do that, I urge you to watch the previous um, tutorial. But we're gonna show you here how to create the cut lines. Um, again, for this is for the, um, the printed papers, or the, the papers that you already have. So you just go over to the um, select trace area, the trace panel, you hit select trace area and draw a box around all of the black outlines and hit trace and then delete the black and now you have cut lines and you can just uh, send it straight to silhouette. I'm just double checking the grid here making sure that everything lines up the way that I wanted it to and I'm actually going to hop over to real time in real life and show you how all of this is going to cut. Okay, so now I've got my photos and, not that, my photos and my journaling printed. I just printed my journaling on plain paper. A, because I didn't have like that much to print and I didn't want to waste good paper. And B, because it's just going to go on top of, um, on top of pattern paper. So it doesn't have to be fancy or special or anything like that. Now I need to tape down my papers because I have been using this mat so much that uh, it's not sticky anymore and I am too lazy and too cheap to go out and buy another <laughs> mat thus far. So once you have uh, printed with the registration marks, it's super easy to just send it through your cameo so you just oof, let's see if we can set this up okay i have the original cameo and this still works great so all you do is load it into your cameo this cameo has a little mark right here that you align it to it doesn't have to be perfect but it should be close because the silhouette needs to read the registration marks and so you just come over to your um silhouette software and hit send and then send. I'm not even going to bother to change my settings and it'll probably mess up on camera because that's the way it goes. But it's reading the registration marks. It's very loudly reading the registration marks. And then it will cut perfectly around the cut lines that we created with those blackout files. Let's see if we can move it over a little bit more. It's a little bit of a funny angle, I know, but you can see that it is cutting perfectly around the edges. I probably should have changed the size just a little bit so that the text wasn't exactly to the edge of the, um, the edge of the circle. It's just something to think about, but it still cut perfectly. Whew, that was quick because it's simple shapes. Let me pull it off. And you can see that, dun da da da, perfect cuts. Yay! Okay, so we repeat the process again with the photos, and I'm gonna fast forward through that since it's the exact same process. Okay, so that is our photos all cut out, same as before. You just pop them out. Sometimes it sticks a little. Pop them out. I printed these on sticker paper, so the color is a little bit dull, but you get the convenience of having photo stickers rather than photo paper, and it's a little bit thinner as well, which is really helpful for big projects like this, where you're gonna have a lot of weekly layouts, etc. 
So you can see, perfect little cuts. Get these ones off. Now for the papers, this is where the process changes a little bit. So you remember that we lined up our papers so that each of the patterned blocks were in a three by four square. And that makes it super easy to just cut some three by fours and align them along the grid. Doesn't matter what, which ones you put where because they're all just gonna be cut out and you can put them wherever you want when they're cut. I'm gonna have to tape these down because again, old mat. And the patterned, or actually solid circles, I suppose, whatever you want to use, you can use cardstock, you can use more patterned paper, um, it doesn't matter for the journal mats, or if you're a little bit Photoshop savvy, you can print them out all together with color, but we are not using Photoshop beyond the basics for this layout. So I did not do that, but the, um, the circles that we need to cut out are, um, two by two squares. So I'm going to align those to the squares that we decided on in the Silhouette Studio, or I guess in Photoshop. I'm gonna take these down first. Make sure that nothing moves, because that would be a bummer. I'm making sure to not tape too far in on either side to not interfere with the cutting blade. You wanna make sure you use washi for this with the pattern paper because you are uh, or potentially going over things that you might need. So washi comes off easier than like a scotch tape. Let's do, let's just be extra careful here because my silhouette is testy. I'm gonna use all the washi tape. Okay, so now I need to put some two by two squares down for the um, circles. All right, so I've got my five squares and I'm going to align them right to where I have them on my silhouette mat. This might change depending on where you put them on your silhouette mat. Make sure you uh, pay attention basically to where you have them. I centered them in squares so that um, it would be easier for me to keep track of where they went. So there we go. Stick these down with more washi. Make sure you use a washi you don't care about since you're gonna be using a lot of it if you are like me and have to tape these down. These cuts are a little bit closer than the other ones because the, um, but closer to the edges of the pattern blocks because of the size of the circles. So you could make these technically a little bit bigger since you have a lot of room around the edges and uh, give yourself a little bit more wiggle room depending on how much paper you're willing to sacrifice to the silhouette gods. So you could make it like three inches or, you know, an inch or two and a half inches all the way around instead of just straight two. Okay, phew, that was a lot of washi, people. So just like with the other ones, now all you have to do is send it to the silhouette and cross your fingers because sometimes the silhouette is testy. It's part of the game, I guess. Hallelujah, I think we did it right here. Okie dokie, now everything is cut out and perfectly sized for a, this one is for the big happy planner. I'm actually going to print out um, blank pages because I prefer uh, not to have all of the extra stuff I've discovered, all of the lines and things, but I'm just gonna lay it out in here just so that you can see so all you do now is come in here and lay them out 
just like you would any other layout. I'm just gonna randomly put these down here because uh, I haven't thought about it yet. And we will do a uh, memory plan with me with this stuff in the next video. I just wanted to, let's put this one here. I just wanted to um, show you, what am I doing here? Okay, wait. this one goes here, this one goes here, this one goes here, and this one goes here. Let's just put them there. And then the photos that we printed, So you can see it's super de duper easy. Once you get the hang of it, of course there is a learning curve. There's a learning curve with any new skill set that you're gonna pick up. But I really feel like some digital skills are totally worth it and necessary in our 21st century world to have like really spectacular kick booty pages. So. I hope that this tutorial was helpful. I hope that you picked up a, a lot of great new skills. I hope it was clear. If you have any more questions, of course, I will answer them in the comment section below. So go ahead and leave them for me. And I am going to publish a plan with me with all of this stuff um, alongside this video. So if you haven't watched that yet, I highly recommend it. All right, bye.